We're watching films on the toilet Cause that's what dads have to do When the movie's unsuitable for your kids Then pretend you need a number two If you need a break from your family or spouse There's a lavatorial picture house Watch Terminator 2 while you're sitting on the loo Enjoy the whole of Rambo 4 with your trouts on the floor We're watching films on the toilet How about you? Welcome to Watching Films on the Toilet. A couple of dads, we watch films on the toilet because we can't watch them with our young children or uh, old wives <laughs> who don't like those kind of gruesome, gory, violent films that we normally talk about. And then we chat about them amongst mm-hmm. other things. And that's it, isn't it? That's it, yeah. It's all in the theme song. Try and have a bit, a bit of a laugh. <laughs> oh, a <little> laugh. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, we'll see, won't we? We'll see about that. So today we're going to be discussing the 2008 film Rambo, starring mm. and directed by... So that's right. Or as they call it in Plymouth, Rambo. <laughs> yeah, that's what they would say. Yeah. Have you seen Rambo? It's actually, it's very violent and I don't think I'll be watching it again. It's disgusting. <laughs> Before that, Ben, time for correspondence. hey have So, have you received a letter? I have received a letter. It's from uh, old Josh Widdicombe. <laughs> oh, hooray! Josh has written in. He has, yeah. It's fair to say we've we've probably laid into Josh a bit. Oh, I mean, he deserves it, though, doesn't he? Yeah, he deserves it. I mean, he, he's, uh, he's asked for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. Here's the letter. Dear Watching Films on the Toilet... Devon Funnyman and classic dad Josh Widdicombe here. Why oh why do you continue taking the mickey out of me? I don't like it at all. The constant barbs about the lame stand-up and secretly sordid private life have been nothing but mean-spirited. But last week you crossed a line. When you pretended that I had a stand-up bit about my son shooting people from a bell tower, you were bang out of order. I take parenting incredibly seriously, and I will not stand for people making my children the butt of their jokes. As parents yourselves, you should feel ashamed. Make jokes at my expense all you like. I can take it, but leave my children out of it. My son will grow up to be a decent, good-hearted man. He would never shoot random strangers from a bell tower. If my son kills anyone, it will be those filthy prostitutes, just like his dad does. Yours, Josh W. (laughs) Ah... There we go. <laughs> oh, wow. All, all came at the end there, didn't it? It's a slow burn. Do you want to apologise to Josh? I mean, I would never apologise to Josh, Josh Widdicombe, ever. I guess you bring, bring people's children in, into comedy, somewhat frowned upon. Yeah. And, and as Josh said, said, you know, his son would never kill anyone. And if it does, it would just be, you know, ladies of the night. Like his dad. Like his dad. <laughs> like Josh has done. <laughs> oh, good to know. Well... Let's see. Hopefully Josh is listening to this. He's not going to be happy with that apology because it wasn't one. So maybe all right and again. I hope hope so. Maybe maybe leave a voice message next time, Josh. (laughs) Speaking of voice messages, we've had one. We upset someone else last week. Film director Michael Bay, who uh, we, we found some footage of him on the set of Ambulance really laying into Jake Gyllenhaal. I put it on the internet and it's gone viral. So he had something to say about that. So I'll, I'll play you the message. Hey, this is a message for those toilet movie fucks. Those da 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 Okay, I can't get that fucking song out of my head. Hold on. Ring, ring, ring. I'm in the middle of... What do you mean? I don't read scripts, okay? Uh, uh, uh. Don't you fucking go anywhere, you pieces of shit. The third act, nobody gives a fuck. The drone guy. The guy that flies the drone. No, not that guy. He's the same age as me. No, I want a child, okay? Find me a child that can fly a f***ing drone down the side of... <laughs> under a... Burr, burr, and up my f***ing ass. That's the movie, okay? And as for you f***s in your podcast, if you play this message, I will... <laughs> the both of you in your sleep, okay? You got that? Hold on. Ring, ring. Who the fuck is this? Do I want cocaine? What the (laughs) fuck do you think? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, There he is. Michael Bay. Michael Bay there. Very cross. He was was very cross, wasn't he? Very cross. 
he he struggles keeping keeping his thoughts in a in sort of in a in a, in a linear sort of way. He does he? He, he doesn't really finish sentences. I've noticed. Yeah, he was really cross. I'm not sure. Should I? Po- I I don't really have anything to apologise for because. I was just sharing with the world what he said. If there was an apologiser between the two of us, it would be you, wouldn't it? I think I said to someone yesterday, a child started crying in front of me. There was no reason for it. And I said, I don't, I don't know what I did. I don't know what I did, but I'm sorry. And that kind of mm-hmm. sums up my entire life. I don't know what I did, but I'm sorry. So why did you apologise? I don't know, because it was just my natural reaction to do so. So if, if I was queuing up somewhere with my kids and one of them started crying and the, the man next to them went oh sorry I, i'd be like well what have you done you psycho no you're right you're right so what should i have done well i mean what did you do the child climbed up on something i went over them to to them just in case they fell off and they just start crying i don't feel like i did anything i think in those situations i was, i would rather than face any social embarrassment mm. i'd rather just let another person's child hurt themselves <laughs> Okay, well, I'll remember that for next time. Uh, good. Well, great correspondences. Uh, Eamon. Hello. Have you got any toilet news? I have indeed. Yes. When nature calls, a woman plunges headfirst into filthy National Forest vault toilet after dropping her phone and using dog leash as harness to lower herself in to retrieve it. Oh, wow. A vault toilet is, is a, it's like a big tank. They get emptied by, by a lorry. I had to look that up. So a California woman was rescued from a vault, vault toilet after plunging headfirst into oh. it while trying to retrieve her cell phone by using a dog leash as a harness. It sounds like the sort of the worst stunt that Tom Cruise could do. It sounds like something that had happened on Jackass. Yeah. She tried to use a dog leash as a harness to lower herself into the toilet. So she rappelled into the toilet. Yeah. However, it did not support her weight and she fell into the vault. <laughs> She fell into the vault head first. Oh, head first. Oh, yeah. the worst direction to fall in. The woman spent around 20 minutes attempting to get out of the vault toilet oh. before ultimately finding her phone and calling 911. It's disgusting. There's a brilliant picture of the uh, Brennan Fire Department. Two guys who are in front of the, the toilet. Yeah. And they, they cannot look happier with themselves. <laughs> They're absolutely beaming. <laughs> What what do you think they're happy that she did that or that they got her out? I don't know. They must just be pleased they're on the news. Do you think they were like uh, <laughs> saying to the woman like uh do you want do you want to get in one of these? <laughs> do you want to do you, do you want to come in? So she's covered. Just like cut got cake. Yeah. In in poop. Come on. Come on. Come over. <laughs> come on, let's get Well, look, we we'll take them and probably not use it, but let's let's get you in for one anyway. Go on, hold up your phone though. Hold up your phone. Hold up your smelly phone that you <laughs> apparently worth it. Just those two smiling with this monster in between them. Yeah. Well, as, as I shared on this program very early doors, mm-hmm. I was once covered head to, to toe in human poop. You were, weren't you? And uh, they they didn't even think to, to offer to take a photo of me afterwards. Right. I was actually quite insulted by that. But look at your skin compared to mine. I mean, it's beautiful, isn't it? I mean, I look radiant. Says it all, really, doesn't it? Trade, trade secret. Yeah, That's I think it. that woman's now gonna be like, she'll be on one of those spam type adverts, and it's like her anti-aging product, and it'll be like, doctors hate this woman, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like her, her anti-aging secret. Yeah, human like, waste. I jumped into a barrel full of human waste. <laughs> uh, yeah, and and I, and it took twenty years off my skin. Bottom half, like haggard old woman. Mm. Top half, like beautiful, but like covered in dirt. <laughs> or it'll just say, doctors hate this woman and give absolutely no reason. Yeah. Just. And then in fairness, people, that doesn't really generate mystique. Because people are like, yeah, after, she's covered in I Yeah, look at her as well. She looks Gross. like a monster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good. Excellent. So anyway, so this week we're talking about 2008 Rambo. So this is the fourth film in the Rambo franchise, starring Old Sly. How did, how did you watch this film? I uh, watched it on the toilet, of course. How many sittings? Seven. Yeah, similarly, I, I did it in five. And in every episode, I attempt to summarise the film in the time it takes Eamon to do a really long wee. And we call it mm. the summer wee. <laughs> and uh, this week, Eamon, what did you have a drink for me to provide that 
that lengthy time. A load of snake blood. Oh, snake blood. Mm. Snake blood. How is that? It's horrible. How much did you drink? Three litres. Wow. How long? I didn't really do a wee as such, but I was in A&E for, for 27 hours. Oh, okay, good. So I've got 27 hours in which to summarise the film Rambo. Correct. Well, I'm still going to try and do it as quickly as possible, even though you've given me a silly long time. And it won't be very impressive when I manage to do it quickly, but here we go. So, traumatised war veteran turned vigilante mercenary, John Rambo, is living in Thailand, catching snakes, sailing his boat, and dehydrating himself to look swole AF, until a bunch of Christian missionaries ask him to ferry them into Burma, so they can provide medical aid to the victims of a long-running civil war, because that's what Christian missionaries do. Rambo takes some persuading, but after an oddly philosophical conversation, he drops them off in the war zone and heads home to catch some snakes. Unfortunately, the missionaries are attacked by a bunch of murderous soldiers. Whoa! who throw children into fires and feed people to pigs. Rambo agrees to take a bunch of proper mercenary leads into Burma to rescue the prisoners and then tags along for the absolute carnage that lies ahead. They sneak into the soldiers' camp, rescue the humanitarians and make their way back to Rambo's boat. Hooray! No. Unfortunately, the remaining soldiers are hot on their tails, so Rambo has no choice but to obliterate everyone literally after a brutal fight rambo escapes with the remaining missionaries then he heads back to the u.s to see his dad R rambo and that's the end okay well that's one minute 26 right. so quite long quite yeah. long i know you uh get got quite blasé about the 27 hours but maybe you'd need that <laughs> maybe if you told me i only had a minute i would have sped up well, I'm sorry that I ended up in A&E for 27 hours after drinking three litres of snake blood. You're right, actually. I didn't ask. Are you all right now? No. No, no. The entire bottom half of me has been has basically been eaten away. Good. Now, Eamon, you are a philosophy graduate. I am indeed. Okay, now, there's a part in this film where Rambo, the hero, is uh, refusing the call to action. Mm. And then he is convinced by Julie Benz... Mm to take the Christian mer missionaries, not mercenaries, missionaries up the river. Yeah. And they engage in a very philosophical conversation about the value of life, which ends with, with the following lines. Rambo says, No, you're trying to change what is. And Julie Ben says, And what is? And that's the end of the conversation. So, Eamon, my question mm. for you, what is? Uh, I've been expecting this. I've been expecting this mm -hmm. question for a long old time, so I, of course, have an answer prepared. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And that answer will be forthcoming yeah. when I finish this sentence. Okay. Uh, which will be sometime... I can't wait. ...round about... So excited. ...now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, fair. I, I've made a note about that. I'm, I'm so... I know... That, this was 2008, so what's that, 14 yeah. years ago. But wow. even then, why do we have to go through this rigmarole of someone going to the protagonist? Will you help us? Will you go yeah. on this quest slash challenge slash adventure? And they go, no, no, I don't want to do it. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> and they go, oh, no, please. And they go, no, 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 go away. Yeah. And then a plucky member of that team comes back and it's just like, are you sure? And they go, oh, all right, then I'll come along. It's all like, right. No, you're oh, going to okay, do it. Just okay, okay, I will. What's different about this film compared to other movies where the, the hero refuses and then obliges mm. is that usually the hero has some kind of personal reason to get involved. Whereas with this, she's just pretty. Is that it? Is that the reason? Yeah. She's, she's smoking hot. Isn't she? Yeah. <laughs> you do whatever she asks you to do. Apparently so. I know a little bit about international development, weirdly, because that's what my wife does. Yeah. And no Christian missionaries would go, well, we know this place is like an absolute hellhole. Yeah. The best thing we can do with our time and resources is go there. Let's try and go there <laughs> and and like risk everything. Not only ourselves, but the people we ask to help us. Yeah. And the people we're trying to help. That would never, ever, ever happen. What they do is they go, um, well, let's just raise as much money as we can. And, so in, and that will go through the official channels yeah. with the the charities and non-profit organizations that they're already in place. That's right. It's laughable. 
So initially they're like, we're going anyway. Okay, I'll take you. Rambo then shoots four pirates in the head. Uh, shoots one of them about five times in the head. Yeah. And even at that point, they still keep going. I know. Which, of course, like, everyone would, like in real life, obviously, like completely wig out. And they'd be like, you know, let's go immediately. Yeah. But not, not only that, the uh, the head church guy is just like, uh, I don't approve of what you've just done. <laughs> like, even though yeah. clearly just saved all of their lives. Yeah. It's just like, well, I can't condone what you've just done. And in fact, I'm going to report you. Yeah. What a loser. <laughs> so you've got this group of Christian missionaries and then you've got a group of mercenaries. So they're just a proper bunch yeah. of mercenaries, isn't they? You, what are you talking about? Oh, this is this stinking place. I don't want to be here any more than you do. They had to cast someone who was of Southeast Asian ancestry. One of the American actors obviously had that it's that sort of heritage i think simply because yeah i think it's like a back covering exercise so that any any time someone used any sort of racist language they sort of cut to him and he would sort of like roll his eyes so the so it's kind of like the filmmakers having their cake and eating it there it really was it was like hey they're not all bad <laughs> yeah. yeah do you know what I, I was thinking like could you make a film like that these days because it really was basically saying this and all the people from this one country are just really horrible it's a bizarre film i mean it's so it, it's banned in myanmar slash burma yeah i'm surprised and it really does feel like like a sort of video nasty from the 80s yeah because it's so violent and so extreme and sort of so in such poor taste yeah really, it is that yeah it feels like something you would have to hunt down and you know watch with your mates it's quite remarkable it was just one of those things where it, we all know the head honcho of the baddies is a despicable man because <laughs> yeah. of the things we've seen him say and do yeah and then they were like hmm I'm not sure we've really hammered home just how horrible this man is. Yeah. We better just make him a paedophile, just just in case. I'm slightly worried <laughs> that people might end up liking this guy. How do you make sure yeah. they don't like them? Let's make him a paedophile. He does look quite cool with those aviators on. Yeah. I watched this film on Amazon. Yeah. And one of the brilliant things about Amazon is the uh, the X-ray yes feature that they have it's incredible the hilarious thing is a lot of the things are clearly written by like gun nuts because all like the goofs and continuity errors like usually you'd hope there'd be like something funny like uh one scene he's wearing a green hat in the next it's red yeah <laughs> there's genuine one in this where it's like uh when he's firing the 50 caliber gun when the ammunition has run out it clicks several times in reality <laughs> this would not happen it's self-cycling ammunition it would only click once <laughs> It's just like, no one cares. That is not entertaining in the slightest. I guess these are the sort of people that rewatch this film yeah. over and over again, though. Part of the general trivia. It says, during its long development process, the film went through a few different story premises. One unproduced script featured Rambo living a quiet life with wife and child until white supremacists kidnap his family. Okay. Another found Rambo trying to stop a hostage situation at the United Nations, where he was working as a diplomat. <laughs> Rambo? Okay. When when terrorists, including Rambo's adopted son, take control of the UN headquarters in New York City. Hmm. Like Rambo diplomat. Why would yeah, exactly. Like he a deeply troubled man, like perennially on the run from the law, yeah. is somehow gone straight and so straight he works for the UN. Yeah. <laughs> but he's adopted a son who then becomes a terrorist. I mean <laughs> it's just like how it's it's just I find it, it absolutely fascinating and also also terrifying if you throw enough excrement at a wall some of it will stick well i mean barely any has though has it or if you obliterate someone with a hand cannon Mm. they'll stick to the wall as well i mean that's the sad thing isn't it like everything is just like a very thin preamble to get to like the crazy gunfights it is i mean there's all that trash but the violence is undeniably exhilarating it is just so, so violent. Mm. And it's very well done. There's obviously he shoots the pirates, but there's a point at which he fires an arrow, mm. a couple of arrows through one of the fellas. Yeah. And an arrow goes through his head and then the guy lands on a mine. Yes. And blows up. Yeah. I mean, it's very inventive and very, very shocking. But is it shocking? <laughs> 
I was trying to think. I, I was racking my brain as to like think of the really most shocking moments of violence I can remember. And actually, some of the best examples were in Game of Thrones. Oh yeah, yeah. If you think about the pilot episode of Game of Thrones where Jaime Lannister pushes Bran Stark out of the window, <laughs> yeah. I remember being like, oh, "Whoa!" Like that was really just like took caught me way off guard. Mm. Like the, the the like the Red Wedding. Both of those things, yeah, deeply, deeply shocking, but they had been been earned by lots of, of well paced, sort of structured, you know, drama. Maybe the word is uh, visceral. Oh, it's visceral, it, but it, it it means nothing. Yeah, because you know you're meant to feel shock seeing like children and women and and men being like brutalized in that raid scene. Yeah, but because we're not really given it any sort of background or or you know meet those characters. And actually, I thought it was filmed in. It was filmed like an action sequence, yeah. so it's quite sort of dynamic. There was like whip pans, <laughs> crash scenes, and stuff. <laughs> which, it, and as soon as you, you they use that kind of language of filmmaking, you suddenly realise, oh, this is an action sequence that's not real. Yeah, I thought it was incredibly violent and visceral, but really like low impact. Surely, you felt something when Rambo obliterated the man with the mounted gun. I mean, it's hilarious. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's absolutely hilarious. I think my favourite bit of the whole film is when he sets off a nuke in the middle of the woods. <laughs> I know. Because <laughs> they go, um, like, and I'm going to sound like that bloody ammunition nerd now. Yeah, you are. But they go like, oh, this is a, it's a bunker bus, buster bomb from World War II. Mm. So it's just like you're saying, okay, this thing that's been sat here rotting for 70 years, still life, yeah, still going to go up? Guaranteed colossal yeah. explosion. And- which would have wiped out all the missionaries and the mercenaries and everybody else as well. But also, like, what was it doing there in the first place? There's, in the middle of, there's no bunkers there. Why, why are they dropping it in the middle of, of a jungle? Who knows what madmen do, Eamon? Who knows what those crazy Brits are up to during this war? Exactly. What is? What is? Yeah. Yeah, we, we keep on circling back to that question, don't we? What is? No, well, you haven't given me an answer. So well, I suppose the, uh, the classic answer is what isn't. I'm not satisfied. No. I'm not satisfied with well, that. That's all you're going to get from me. Also, Sly's career had pretty much gone down the toilet until there was a Rocky, Rocky Balboa came out in, I think, 2006, which blew him up a bit. Pretty good. And then he resurfaced. Now... You remember when when Fight Club came out, Mm. Brad Pitt's physique sort of changed the way that leading men then looked in Hollywood movies. That's right, a bit leaner. Very lean, Mm. hairless. And then I think Sly was trying to do the same thing Mm. because he kind of came back with this leather, quite severely dehydrated, very veiny, Mm. but big physique. Which did it did catch on. I think Hugh Jackman as Wolverine kind of did the same thing. Mm-hmm. But thankfully, it seems to have sort of died out now. Again, on the uh, X-ray notes, mm. said this is the only film in the franchise up to that point where he hadn't been topless. Ah. Like all the other films, says, you know, spends a lot of time sort of half naked to show off his his body. Yeah. And the reason for it is he was halfway through getting all the tattoos inked on his shoulders. Oh, for the expendables. So he's but those are real apparently. Like he oh. has big proper tats on his shoulders. Was it because his human growth hormone hadn't quite kicked in as well? That's right, yeah. He's, he's really waiting for that enlarged head to start popping. Yeah, it's just it just doesn't work without it, does it? No. No, it's interesting that the whole how hench you should be now as leading man. I think we've kind of sort of fallen mm. somewhere between the two stores, haven't we? So like um, Chris Pratt seems like the archetype now, doesn't he? So he's kind of, yeah, you know, regular looking guy, but obviously done some serious work in the gym. So yeah. se- semi-jacked, I think is the industry term. I mean, but even that takes an incredible amount of work. I mean, he's sort of movie semi-jacked, but he's yeah, not. Yeah, movie semi-jacked is like regular f- fully jacked. Yeah. I think they've realized that mm. someone like The Rock, who has such an insane physique, you you can't you can't play a normal man. No. Chris Pratt can actually play a normal mm-hmm. guy, I guess. Yeah. The Rock can't. You, you are a massive uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger fan from back in I the day. I was a big Arnie fan. Did a presentation on him in year eight. What grade did you get for that? I don't remember the grade. I just remember that... Um, 
that made quite an impact. No, that could, that could mean it was good or bad. Yeah. So was the jackedness part of the appeal? W- w- was I into Arnie because of his jackedness? Was it part of the appeal, yeah? Yeah, I think it was. He was his body was so extreme. When you saw Arnie on screen, it yeah, it was impressive. Yes, it was Eamon. Hmm. I'm not I'm not gonna deny it. He was and well, still is. He's a specimen, you know? Oh, he's not any more Ben come off it. He's not bad. He still keeps in shape. He's better than you. I could chin old on Schwarzenegger, no doubt. No way. No doubt. He's got this weird old man muscular body now where his kind of chest is like a triangle. If you see him in profile, it's like the, the chest no longer sort of sticks directly out. <laughs> yeah. At right angles, it goes sort of like down, like like it's a, a, a triangle. Yes. And he has these weird skinny legs. And he has a hooers in his kitchen. And I imagine that's why he... Uh, crashed his massive car because of his triangle chest because of his triangle chest yeah don't be mean to Arnold he's the one who tried to rat, run someone over Ben it wasn't me he didn't mean it he's an old man my granddad reversed into a tank before he stopped driving we were at a summer fair and um, <laughs> he was alright let's go it's time to go and he got in his Volvo and there was a tank there, you know, for all the kids to see. Yeah. And yeah, he managed to, he, this is true, he managed to reverse into the tank. Oh, it's an and he actual, got out of his car. Like an armoured tank. Yeah, like a proper tank. Yeah. He's like, oh, bloody, what is that doing there? It's like, <laughs> mm. I don't think it appeared out of nowhere, Grandad. Yeah, and you can't see the stationary tank. Maybe it's time to, to hang up the, uh, the driving gloves. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to interrupt, Damon, uh, for a second. We're just a uh, shout out mm. to our sponsor. Uh, it's a new product on the market, which you may have seen in the supermarkets. It's called ham cream. Oh, ham cream mm. uh, squirts like cream, mm. but it is ham. Oh, OK. And what's the, what's the what's the texture then? So it's sort of like um, fluffy and light. Yeah. Ham. Huh. <laughs> yeah. And it's not yeah. hand. But- it's not hand cream. You're not saying hand cream, are you? <laughs> no, no. Ham, ham. cream. Oh, no. Yeah, so it comes in a... Like shaving foam. Yeah, like shaving foam. So do you wash your hands with it then? No, no, no. You can spray it straight into your mouth. <laughs> like uh, like whippy cream. Like whippy cream. That's what it's like. It's it's whipped ham cream. Uh, it's so often that I'm just like really pay. I just want that like hit of ham. Yeah. But I can't be bothered <laughs> to open a packet of ham. It's for, it's, yeah. it's for that. It's exactly like that. It saves the inconvenience of placing a slice of ham on bread. Oh, God. It takes forever. <laughs> it takes forever, right? Yeah. Instead, a little swirl of ham, bang, mm-hmm. bobs your sandwich, as they say. Oh, that sounds delicious. Yeah. Glad they're our new sponsor. That's right. And uh, you can get a, a free box of ham cream at uh, hamcream.org. Uh, use the code toiletfilms. And, uh, and they'll ship it straight to your door. Oh. Because you want a lot, wouldn't you? You wouldn't want, like, one. Oh, and it's like, you know how addictive ham is. You eat, you never just eat, like, one packet of ham. No. You only ever, you always eat, like, six or seven. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, give them a, a bit of love. And back to our film chat. So, Eamon, it's come to the part of the show where we decide whether we're going to flush the film down the mm-hmm. toilet, much like Rambo flushes his toilet his toilet yeah is that the best we could do yeah <laughs> what does rambo flush oh he flushes uh mercenaries out of the jungle ah good like, uh, some kind of bad soldier man we'll start that again right oh hang on so that's not part of oh oh you have noticed you do this you'll ask you'll ask for feedback and then you'll cut me out what oh yeah that's a good point now i just want cohesion that's all Okay. Okay, no, fine. We'll carry on. Forget it. Look, no, no. Ooh, behind the no. scenes. Yeah, yeah people this, love this that. Is, any t- basically, any time Ben says something like in some way insightful or amusing, yeah. that, that you've missed a like, massive cut where I've just told him exactly what to say. Yeah, every time. And he, yeah. just, he just removes it. And then it's just every like... Every time. Well, let me, I'm just going to rephrase that. So it sounds like I've made it up. Yeah. Anyway, or... So uh, will we flush it or will we fish it out like Rambo... Uh, fishes snakes out of the sea and puts them in a bag like big rubber snakes that he puts out in a bag out of the sea yeah he fishes snakes out of the sea does he near the sea go on do a better one what yeah. does he fish out well he fishes fish doesn't he <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> he, fish, he does. He shoots fish with an arrow. He does, yeah. Oh. Foreshadowing. <sighs> oh, he, uh, okay. he could shoot that fish. I wonder, I wonder if he can shoot a man with that bow and arrow. Guess we'll Through never find out. I wonder if that fish will land on a mine. <laughs> That's what she's... <laughs> It'd be brilliant that if he was like, good. yeah, if he used like fish as his weapon. That'd be fun. Or if more he expensive. hunted fish with claymores. That would be awesome. Either way, Eamon, yeah. good God, will you fish <laughs> this out or will you flush it down the toilet? Oh, flushing. It's, mm-hmm. it, it's interesting. It didn't, I wasn't cross after I finished it. Yeah. But I was just like, that's just a bit of silliness. That is what I thought of it. I thought the soundtrack was quite good and the sound editing was pretty good. So it's not like, it was dross. You know, people are taking their time over this. It's just a shame they didn't spend any time on the story or, or script. And how about you? I am actually very torn with this. Um, are you and really? I didn't expect to be. I am because you know <laughs> I, I do like violent movies. Yeah. And I do think the violence in this movie was done well. It made me want to go back and watch the action bits again. Not the village massacre, that was horrible, but the obliteration at the end is just, it's just mad. It's completely mad. Is that what it says in the script? Rambo obliterates army. He might, he he does, doesn't he? He might as well. And for that sequence, I would sit through the rest of the film just to get to that. Oh, okay. (sighs) So, I mean, it's not going in the tank of glory. You flushed well, it. I flushed it. So I am going to fish it out. <laughs> I'm going to fish it out. I know it's mental. I know it yeah. says nothing and it is in bad taste. But that sequence where he, from when he sets off the nuke to when he blows up the man's head on the boat, I just, I can't not say I enjoyed that. I, it was thrilling. I did love the, the bit where he, he takes control of the gun. It's hilarious because obviously he, he, he kills the guard next to it. And then I hadn't realized this. There's a driver in the Jeep. So the next thing he does is just like points the gun, pushes the gun up. So it points the gun directly at this guy from about that far away. And it just like turns him into like paste. He cuts the guy in half at the end and he sort of rolls into pieces. Yeah. It is something. So I would fish it out. But fair enough. Ultimately. Without the double fish, Rambo is flushed away. So, that was Rambo. Uh, now we're doing our top five game, where Ben and I try and guess each other's top five films based on a specific theme. The theme inspired by the film we just watched. This episode, because Rambo's very violent so it's violent very violent indeed it's so violent it's disgusting it is disgusting we're it's doing disgusting. our top five most violent films so ben and i take it in turns to try and guess each other's films yeah after three guesses whoever yeah. has the most correct guesses wins yay that person has the honor of being a great man <laughs> and most importantly they get to choose a film for the next episode yeah uh, the exactly. loser has to partake in a horrible forfeit mm. for their mm. shame, the shame of losing. What would your criteria for choosing a violent movie be? I think I took violence to have a, an aspect of surprise in it, mm. like the unexpe- unexpected, I suppose. Okay. Yeah. I mean, violence should be shocking, as we've discussed before. So, yes, I, I agree with your element of surprise. I think a, a violent movie will will be very violent have lots of violence oh wait, wait a minute you think a violent movie would be very violent that's flipping heck ben that's deep isn't it that was in my notes that's the title of this episode a violent film is very violent <laughs> <laughs> violent film very violent good all right um shut up and guess my first one. <laughs> oh, okay i'm gonna say itchy the killer no it's grotesque but it's sort of it's quite comical. I wasn't shocked by it. It's just quite silly. Fair it is. All right, this is a duplicate. Okay. I'm just going to go straight in with it. Robocop. Mm. Oh, no. It's a good call, actually. Go on, then. Another guess. A Serbian film? I didn't choose that. It was just designed to shock. I, there's nothing particularly surprising about that film because I think I knew how 
horrible it was going to be. And it really is. Um, so no, my next choice for you would be Commando. No. Damn, I thought you might have chosen an Arnie. And that was the one that popped into my head. But I would say the thing about Commando is it's not that, that violent in a way because it's just lots of cartoon level lots shooting. Of shooting yeah i think we're on a completely different wavelength here amen i didn't want to say it but it's felt like that for some time <laughs> is this the podcast where we split up yeah <laughs> okay well i'm going to go for, for for one that i think is quite violent okay and i know you like mm-hmm. is the raid which raid the raid the raid the raid the raid okay i i'll give it to you i actually chose the raid too oh really I did because the Raid 2 features a shotgun blast to the head right at the end, which doesn't mm. cut away. And it yeah. is horrific. <laughs> uh, do you know what? I'll kick myself if you've got this on your list, but we reviewed a film called The Night Comes For Us, mm. which was had a lot of the same fellas in. It that did. is flipping violent. That is, <laughs> yeah. that is unbelievably violent. That was so violent. It yeah. really was so violent. I haven't, I haven't put that on, but oh, okay. Cool. For my last guest, I'm going to say Bone Tomahawk. Yes, 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 I yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <sighs> I didn't know if you'd seen it. There's a bit where basically a man gets butchered like like an animal, and I will never forget that image. It's, f- I don't know what they used. It looked so real. It's so horrible. It's, and it's, it is h- horrible. We've both had three guesses. We've both got mm-hmm. one right. I guess it comes down to the amount of duplicates we used. I yeah. had I had one. I had zero. And you had none. So, Eamon, congratulations. You have won this week. Brilliant. Well done, mate. Well done. Thanks I'm not going to get cross this week. I normally am like, oh, God, you. You do, yeah. I don't mind. It was it's such really... a weird one this week that... Um, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> Go on then. T- tell me what was on your list. All right, man. So my top five most this violent movies what I ever done seen were Robocop, Battle Royale, uh, Rambo, which mm-hmm. we've just discussed, The Raid 2 and Old Boy. So I had also Battle Royale. Yep. I can only vaguely remember it, but I know it's violent. Bone Tomahawk, uh, Natural Porn Killers. Oh, okay. Which I don't actually really like that much, but I, I know it's super violent. Mm. Uh, Hostel. Oh, yeah, we saw that, didn't we? It's just that kind of uh, gore porn. We saw that together in Streatham. We did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that guy got very um, excited. He was with a, I'm assuming he was on a date, and he shouted, I'm not sure if I can say it, if it's rude or not. He got, once someone got horribly killed during one mm. part of the film. And he shouted, suck your mum at oh, that was screen, <laughs> which was really very odd. Yeah, it wasn't kind of, it wasn't an exhilarating death. It was horrible. Um, I don't know if they went on a second date. If that was you, please let us know. Yeah. <laughs> if you Shout. were the, uh, the suck your mum chap from Streatham in the early 2000s, <laughs> let us know. Drop us a line. The, okay. That same screening, we saw someone be thrown out of the door, down the steps, by two security guards that were there. Like Jazzy Jeff in The Fresh Prince, when Uncle Phil throws him out of the door. Not quite as fun. Oh. Yeah. Last on my list was Kill List. Oh, yeah. I, that was Which is that was nearly violent. on my list. Too. I think that's that kind of disturbing type violence. That's got some horrible violence in it. Well, so you're the loser, the big lose man. <laughs> that's right. And as a result, you have to do a forfeit. Okay. Very simple forfeit. Do you have to become a Christian missionary? Oh. So good luck. Okay, well, let's see how I get on. Last week, Eamon, you lost. And your forfeit was to rob a bank. Mm -hmm. So how did that go? (laughs) It went a little something like this. Okay, so my forfeit this time is to rob a bank. I'm a bit apprehensive about it. I've never been in trouble with the law. So robbing a bank is quite an escalation. However, I've done some thinking and I've come up with a plan which I'm pretty confident will mean I come out of this whole thing unscathed. Okay, I'm outside the bank. I've got my piece. Just need to psych myself up and then I'm going in. Let's do this. This is a robbery. Everyone on the f***ing ground now. Don't look at me. Don't you f***ing look at me. You, stand up. You're coming with me. 
You're going to help me get what I came here for. But this is a food bank. There's no money here. I f***ing know what this place is, you f***ed. Now start shoving those tin peaches in this sack now. Well, this is a charity. Shut it. Oh, dear. Come on, come on. That's everything. Good. Now, will you remember this face? Yes. Wrong answer, Grandma. The rest of you keep your f***ing eyes down. Okay, well that went pretty much perfectly. Not got use for this stuff that I stole, to be honest, so I'm just going to throw it in the bin. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Okay, right, so the film we're going to be watching next time mm -hmm. is The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. Oh, with Nick Cage. Uh, starring Nick Cage, Pedro Pascal, and directed by Tom Gormican. Great. I'm well, look, looking forward to that. Righto. That's it. You can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube, and all the, plat all the platforms. Uh, leave us a message. Write us a review. Just, yeah. just do something, please. Just do something. I think we've got like six reviews. I Honestly, and this is with all sincerity, I bloody love reading reviews that say how great we are yeah it's like getting it's like how i used to feel at school when i got good grades i mm. used to read and reread the teacher's comments yes so if you want to give an old man a real buzz just just write a nice review go on keep flushing bye bye <laughs>